Clippers.com live here with Shadeji Green. I've been wanting to talk to you, and I wanted to talk to you before the Clarissa Shields fight, but it actually worked out better, so this way you didn't have to be pinned to a prediction. Right, right, right. But you had the ability to be in both camps. So you've been in there with both champions before Christina Hammer's loss. Just first and foremost, um, tell everybody about you, uh, what's going on with you. I know you got a couple of professional fights now, so yeah. first and um, foremost, let's talk about that. Well, um, thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, I am a 168 <coughs> super middleweight contender. My name is Shadeja Green. Um, I was highly ranked in the amateurs, but I was at heavyweight, so I had to drop about 40 pounds to get down to super middle. I'm 1-0 currently, 1-K-O, um, but I have a lot of experience, so... Um, I got another fight coming up in May, the end of May. Um, I'm not sure the date. I think it's May 25th. Could be a day after, day before. But um, we get ready. We train hard, um, and I'm looking forward to that. Now, um, if we, if anybody followed that uh, Clarissa Shields fight, the whole buildup, she was talking how Hammer couldn't affect her because she spars with men. Right. Now, I've met you about a year and a half ago. Absolutely. You and I have sparred. Not that I'm good, but I'm still a legitimate heavyweight. I've watched you spar like men. real professional heavyweights, Absolutely. real men. I've seen you spar Paul Woolack. I've seen you spar Hakeem Nurse. So. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to sparring men, you've been doing been that doing at this. different weight classes. Listen, at this point in time, you got to give Clarissa Shields credit. You know what I'm saying? She has the platform. She has the opportunities right now to talk about everything that she's been doing. But I've been doing that for years. I've been I've sparred with at least seven men world champions in 154, 147. So I've sparred with the hardest men, the hardest punchers in men's boxing. I've been doing it to prepare. I don't spar women. Um, it's a pleasure to get in the ring with women, of course, because I get to, you know, let things out and work on my craft and work on stuff. But I spar men like I brush my teeth every day. So that's nothing to me. No disrespect to her, but I've been doing that for years. And obviously there isn't any because you've shared a camp with her. You Absolutely. guys are friends. You Absolutely. Know. We're cool with um, me. Did she have any ill feelings to you going to hammer camp? Did you call her beforehand or it's just business? Um, it's just business. Um, I felt like it was just business. I felt like, um, you know, it, I don't think, I think she was very focused on her fight. And I think that, that that's an amazing step to take. She, she shows world championship caliber. Um, but I think if any ill feelings, it was probably, you know, just like, hey, give me a call and let me know. You know what I'm saying? Give me a heads up. I thought we were close enough. And that, that, was, that was it. But I didn't feel it like, you know, my team, my people around me say, yo, just go. This is an unthinkable experience. It has nothing to do with her. Yeah, it once just, in a lifetime yeah, opportunity. It was just, and, and, and Hammer was very um, amazing. You know, she made sure I was good. She paid me for the sparring. It was a beautiful experience. But it was just basically for me to solidify where I belong. I'm one and oh. You know, at the end of the day, your record shows your experience. Serious. It's, it's the paperwork that shows your experience, where you've been. I don't have that much experience in the pro rankings. I have experience in the amateur. So when I stepped in the ring with Hammer and I was able to do whatever I wanted to do and, and be as great as I am, that solidified me of where I belong. And, that, and she's at 160. And I belong in there with those top world champions. You know what I'm saying? And pretty soon, I'll have my platform. I'll have the opportunities, by the grace of God, to show my skills. And I promise you, the world will be in awe of that. So it was... um. I don't think I, I don't think it was you know it's lingering ill feelings. We haven't had a chance to talk. We probably won't. She's somber and in her you know in her win and her glory, and she deserved that. She deserves to call herself whatever it is. Right now, she doesn't have a challenge. So uh, you know, m most respect and love to her. So, so obviously, you know, want to know um, who you sign with and how are you uh, at least moving forward. I'm just moving on right now by myself. Uh, you know, everybody has the opportunity. They got sponsors. They got promoters. The promoters right now, they don't really know me, and, and, and that's great for the other fighters. I'm moving along as best as we can. We're moving. On, we're doing it by ourselves right now. You know, um, like I said, in, in the future, I look forward to getting the opportunity to be with a promoter, a great promoter, somebody who's going to put me out there and put me in the right place and the right decision. But right now, we're taking anything that comes our way. And, and, and that's that's serious. So. Now, has the resurgence in women's boxing given you that motivation? Like I said, I met you about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, you were an amateur and a, a heavyweight. So was it just your motivation to say that, you know, from a business standpoint, it would be better for you to get lower in weight? Or was it the fact that, you know, women's boxing is on the rise and you wanted to drop down and wait for competition? Like, what drove that motivation to lose over 40 pounds? That's a, great, that's a great question. I think it was both. I think it was me personally. I wanted to be more marketable. I wanted to uh, 
get in a position where I could make some money and could be a, a, a TV draw. Um, right now, bo women's boxing is hot, but it's not hot in every weight class. I don't want people to mistake that. It's hot at 160. It's hot at 168. It's hot at 135. It, Katie Teller, who's I feel like should be mentioned. I think if I watch women's boxing, I'm watching Katie Teller because she, she sort of has a little bit of the style that I have. She's very fancy and very pretty with it and um, precise, but it's hot at you know, different weight classes. Heavyweight is not hot. Nobody, people don't barely want to see women. We're trying to change that. Nobody wants to see a heavyweight sloppy fight. The men's heavyweight, you, you, you don't know what to expect. It might be a knockout or whatever, but women's heavyweight, that's not, that's not hot right now. So I think I did it for both reasons. I think I did it for, you know, just like to be a, a draw and also for myself to feel healthy, to feel lighter. I mean, I was moving lightly at heavyweight, so imagine what I'm doing now. No, again, I've seen you move at heavyweight, which brings me to my next question. Coming down, did your power carry? And in your professional first fight, was it a knockout? Do you think you'll get knockouts? Because it seems like that's what they're pushing on Clarissa and women. Like, mm -hmm. oh, there's no knockout. So, like, the women's boxing, or rather the women professional argument is make it three rounds, I mean, excuse me, three minutes, 12 rounds, and women will give you the knockouts. Now, I don't think it's, the, I don't think it's um, necessarily to add a minute in the 12 rounds. I think if you have the power to do whatever it takes, you can do it whether it's in one minute or two. I have the, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful enough to have a trainer about Terrific Gist who, who, who specializes in that, you know what I'm saying? And he, he basically put, he puts me in positions in, in the ring and makes me work on certain things. If, if anything, if any place that I'm weak, we strengthen it. Now my power happened to be, I've, been, I've had it my whole life, I've had a punch. Um, it took some time to carry it down. When you're losing weight, you have to stay, like if you're losing 30 pounds, and you're 210. When you go to 200, you're going to stay plateaued there for a minute. So your body catches up with the fact that you're 200 pounds. And then your parry carries down. It's a slow process. But if you do it right, your, parry, your, your power will carry down. And I've, I've been graced to have that. I got the same power I had at heavyweight. It's much sharper. It's much faster. Um, you can ask some of my teammates. You know what I'm saying? I think it's much faster. So did you get sharper. that stoppage? I got a body stoppage. Okay. What women you know do that? I, the last, the last, the last uh, women I heard about that has power like that is we was just talking about it today. Lucy Riker and Ann Wolf. I've never seen a woman stop another woman to the body, so I ain't got to speak much on that. And I'm working. I'm, a, I'm an aggressive body snatcher. Now you mentioned your trainer. Obviously, terrific has brought up guys like Kendall Holt and. Uh um, Glenn Tapia. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he has New York connections. Oh, Demetri Salida, Lou DiBella. These are promoters that are actively signing women. I'm right. not going to say looking for, but mm -hmm. Pretty Beast, which I'm sure you know Raquel Miller is signed yeah. with Lou DiBella. Yeah. Na Alicia Napoleon, mm -hmm. she holds the WBA in your division, 168, signed with Lou DiBella. Yeah. Demetri Salida has both Christina Hammer and Clarissa, Clarissa Shields. Shields. Yeah. So, um, Gives you any confidence that maybe T could slide you in there in the future? All you got to do, obviously, is perform in the ring. Right, but. right. I, I feel like um, things happen when they're supposed to happen. Um, I uh, talk. I haven't really. I talked a little bit with Lou DeBella, but you know, like, like I said, to them, box women's boxing has to be scorching hot, and it's growing. It's it's a growing pace. But I think whenever it's supposed to happen, it will. You know. Um, me, preferably, I like Eddie Hearns, too, you know, that's on. I think they're moving fighters and they're treating fighters the way they should be. So when it's supposed to, when it's supposed to happen and I'm supposed to get a great prom promoter to move me, it will. You know, mm -hmm. um, Terrific has more than enough connections. That's why we get the sparring we get. He's a, a great, a, a, a phenomenal trainer, not even great. So, like I said, for me, I'm 1-0. I got to do a little bit more. I got to pay my dues to the sport. And, and, and it makes it a little bit more worth it. It makes it worth the while, worth the wait. Continue to pay my dues and wait my turn because when it is my turn, I don't care who you put in front of me. Nobody can stop that. When it's time for sweets, it's my time, and that's just that. Well, I mean, hold confidence in the fact that a person like Raquel Miller, who has gone to the Olympics, mm -hmm. is signed to Lou DiBella, Absolutely. has yet mm -hmm. to be on television. And she's about 6-0 and or something like that. Right. Alicia Napoleon has a title also mm -hmm. yet to be on television, unless you count whatever Lou is doing with his streaming services mm -hmm. and, and affiliations that he may have. But um, my audience would, uh, you know, they'll definitely get at me in the comment section if I don't ask you about your affiliation or no longer affiliation with uh, Ken Porter. Uh, there was a lot of social media buzz, you signing to Porter. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was signing, but explain what was that and where is that relationship? Um, I can't talk into detail about it. Um, you know, I wish them nothing but the best. That was um, sort of like a, a managerial thing. 
But um, we're working that out on the outskirts, and I, I, I really, I, I, I'm sorry. I hope the fans don't get at you for this, but I really can't speak much about it. But like I said, as a fighter, you have to be comfortable. You have to uh, have the confidence in, in, in the team around you, and that's just that. You know, I'm glad to be home. I'm glad to be back in Jersey where I all started. You know, I started my career here. Um, I built my amateur career from here, and I'm just glad to be back here. So was it a relocation thing? Uh, yeah. Basically, I just relocated back to Jersey. No, no, I mean... You didn't want to be in Vegas, though. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to come home. You know? okay. Like okay. I said, I can't touch too much on it, but um, that's just that. All right, so uh, I guess let's end it with you said you sparred about seven world champions. Give yeah. those, drop those names so these people know who <laughs> um, you actually fighting. Let's see, let's see. I sparred with Sean Porter, of course. Oh. I sparred with Kendall Holt. Um, I sparred, I sparred Franchise Cruz, who's now 168 super middleweight champion. I sparred oh, the HHD. Yep. I spar with Clarissa Shields. I spar with Lady Hammer. I spar with uh, uh, what's the guy name? Um, one, what is he? One twenty four? What is it? Uh, what's Rich? Rich oh yeah. Oh damn! I spar with Richard, Richard Coleman. That man got a heart right here. Hell Richard, yeah! They talk about Richard that. Richard Coleman. Yeah, I spar with him. I went with. That's right like because him. you uh, yep. because of terrific. You get yep. to see all of Andre Rozier all, fighters. All of them. You know, Andre Rozier is a great friend of the. He's family man. Mm -hmm. Um. My man, Chino, Chino's fighter. Uh, I think he's one. Chino, two, Tevin Farmer? No, not Tevin Farmer. The other uh, guy. Stephen got Ortiz. Canito. I spar with Canito. Oh, Jason Sosa. Jason Soto. Jason Sosa. Uh, man. Damn. I got a lot of people under my belt. Um, who else, man? Warlock. War, Paul, Paul Warlock. Warlock. I just got some Jersey all, all boy, time. right? Uh, all the time. That, and that's probably one of my toughest. Yeah, I know. He was here yesterday. Yeah, he's pressure. Really that guy is all pressure. But obviously, uh, Tapia too, right? Glenn Tapia, of course. I spar with Glenn Tapia. And now your stable mate. He's 5-0 uh, with 4 KOs. We, we get it in every time. You exactly. Know? He's, probably, he's probably the sharpest of them all. You know? yes. He's up and coming. And I can't wait for the world to see him. So um, that's like that's like a mirror of times too. You know? yeah. Because we're trained by the same trainer. And his style is... Um, very slippery. Yeah, he's, he's slick. Yeah, he's, slick. He's, he's, he's talented. I've been so. telling people about him for about the same time I've been since I met you, telling yeah. them both about you guys. Yeah. I'm just glad that now is uh, you guys are getting your opportunity. Yeah. Um, we're, we're probably boxing best kept secrets, but we don't want to be a secret no more. Yeah. We tired of being a secret. Yeah, so yeah. our time is coming, and you just gotta patiently pay your dues and, 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 and do what you gotta do, man. That's it. Social media for those not following, can do so. Shadeja underscore green. Um, I try to post as much as I can, but I work too, you know, so I'm busy. And that's it. Basically, Shadeja Green on Facebook. It's simple. S-H-A-D-A-A-D-A-S-I-A, -A -A -A, last name Green. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com. Bachelor's The Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from Title, betting shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.